As with anything these days, hiking gear isn't cheap. For overnight hiking, you need lots of equipment. Your tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, clothes, backpack, and so on. And you want all of these things to work well and keep you out of trouble. If you add everything up, it leaves you with an empty wallet and a big fat bill. I've been there and done that and bought my fair share of hiking equipment. And I've learnt a few things that might save you a good deal of money if you're just getting into the awesome hobby that is hiking. So if I was starting from scratch again, no gear, no nothing, and a healthy looking bank balance, what would I do now? With many hobbies, you buy into it with beginner equipment and slowly evolve your needs over time. This means that the stuff you buy in the beginning becomes unneeded and eventually just becomes a waste of money. One of the best ways to find out what gear you actually will like in the beginning isn't by going out and buying something on a whim. You can think that you're going to like a certain thing by watching a couple videos online, maybe something like this, but the best way to find out what you're going to actually like is by using something. But instead of buying something to use it and then not like it and then you're stuck with it, the best way in the beginning to find out what you actually like and will use is by borrowing equipment or hiring equipment. That way, if you make the wrong choice, it isn't such a disaster. When you're fresh to hiking, you don't really know what to look for on a certain piece of equipment. This mainly goes for the big ticket items like your tent, sleeping bag and your backpack. Without knowing what to look for and what you like specifically, you'll end up making uninformed decisions. Going down the route of borrowing equipment from friends or hiring if that isn't an option is a cost effective way of figuring out what you like. I can tell you what I like and other people online can tell you what they like, but at the end of the day, you need to cater to your needs. If you're just gonna go off of what other people suggest, then it may work out, and I've done this in the past and it's worked out for me, but the best way is to figure out what you're actually going to like and use is by testing it out. And borrowing and hiring from people was something that never even crossed my mind in the beginning, but thinking back on it now, it's just such an effective way to figure out what you're actually going to use and not need to waste all the money trying to figure it out. So once you've gone and tested a fair few different bits of equipment and have a better understanding of what you're actually looking for, now where do you actually spend your budget? Now I know we all like to spend money but before we talk about where we're going to spend this money, it's probably best to talk about a few truths that I've learned about buying equipment. There are a few popular sayings that I now abide by whenever I'm in the market to buy a new piece of gear. Those are, you get what you pay for and buy once cry once. Now, these are sayings that you don't really want to hear when you're trying to buy something on a budget, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to get into hiking for a long time, you're going to want to think of your purchases more like investments rather than just ticking something off of a checklist. Quality gear is expensive, but quality gear lasts. It may be fairly expensive now, but at least I have the confidence that I'm going to be using the piece of equipment that I just bought for many years to come, and that it's not going to fail on me, and I'm going to have to go and buy something else anyway. If I buy cheap, for the most part, it means that I'm not buying quality. For hiking equipment, you can pick two out of these three attributes. Lightweight, durable, and cheap. If something's cheap, it means it's either not going to last you, or it's quite bulky and cumbersome. This, however, doesn't mean that you can't find pieces of equipment that are well made and fairly priced. When it comes to the majority of your budget, you're going to want to spend it on the big three. The big three are your tent, sleeping bag, and backpack. They are known as a big three because they're the most important items in your loadout. As these items are the most important, you're going to want to be looking for quality and longevity as these are an investment. If you make the right decision now, you won't have to buy anything else for a very long time. To decide on what kind of tent you need to buy for your situation, start by thinking about the locations and climates that you're hiking in. Are they dry, damp, high altitude, hot, cold? These things all decide what tent's actually going to be right for you. For most people, a typical three season freestanding tent is going to suit your needs. They aren't super lightweight, but they're durable, versatile and reliable. For the pack weight conscious hiker, there's another alternative that you can consider, which are trekking pole tents. Your tent decision really comes down to where you hike and what conditions you expect to face. Obviously, if you intend to be hiking in alpine conditions, then it's probably smart to choose a four season tent. The first tent that I bought was a three season freestanding tent, and when I bought it, I didn't really know what I was looking for in a tent. I was then introduced into the world of trekking pole tents and realised that they were a better fit for me and my situation. But because I'd spent all my budget on this freestanding tent, I couldn't afford to go and buy a really good trekking pole tent, so I had to settle for something that was more of a budget option. Another item that you should sink a lot of your budget into is your sleeping bag. Your sleeping bag's really important. It's the main item in your kit that's going to protect you from the elements. As such, it's really important that you purchase something of quality. You could also go for a backpacking quilt. They're much lighter and more packable than sleeping bags, but they place more emphasis on your sleeping pad to keep you warm. 
This should be obvious, but the main thing that you need your sleeping bag or sleeping quilt to do is keep you warm. Don't take this lightly. Keeping warm is incredibly important. Even in a non-life-threatening scenario, being warm at night is going to lead to having better sleep than a better time out in the backcountry anyway. I suggest getting a sleeping bag or a sleeping quilt with a comfort rating of at least 5 degrees more than the coldest temperature that you expect to face. I spend the majority of my time hiking in the Australian Alps. The Alps have notoriously unpredictable weather. All year round, summer to winter it can snow and the temperatures can fluctuate massively from 40 degree days all the way down to 0 degree nights sometimes. Because I can't really put my finger exactly on what the temperature is going to be, in the beginning I opted to go on the safer side and simply bought a minus 10 sleeping bag. I knew that for the majority of the year, the temperature range that I'll be facing at night is around minus 5, and so far the decision to buy this specific bag has kept me safe and warm. Although, because it was on the budget side, the weight penalty for carrying such a sleeping bag is a bit much when it's not in the colder months. The last item from the big three is your backpack. Your backpack should be chosen last. This is because you can't know exactly the size of the backpack that you need before you have all the rest of your equipment. You don't want to buy a backpack that has way too much room and you don't obviously want to buy something that can't even fit all of your equipment in it. I've come to recognise that there's a sweet spot for backpack size that works for most people in most situations. This however doesn't mean it's going to exactly relate to you and your needs, but I've found that 40 to 50 litre backpacks work quite well for overnight packs and even day packs and because of this versatility I think they're a really good choice for beginner hikers. If you're looking specifically to do overnights and multi-day trips then getting a larger backpack in the range of 55 to 70 litres is probably better for you. Your clothing is where you can spend a lot of your money but can also save you a lot of your money if you know what you're doing. For your clothing to be effective or at least effective enough it only really needs to be made out of a certain material. If you have the right layering system like the one I outlined in this video, uh, I think it's that side, then it means you don't have to spend heaps of money. In fact you might have all of your layers lying around already. For your base layer you only need to make sure it's made out of a moisture wicking material and that it dries quickly. So an active wear t-shirt such as this might do you just fine. And a mid layer can be something as simple as just a, a fleece jacket. And you've probably already got a down jacket lying around somewhere. If you don't have a quality insulative jacket then it's definitely worth your money to buy one. Your outer shell can also be a budget option. The common budget outer shell is the Frog Togs rain jacket and pants. As they can be bought for less than $50. They're not durable in the slightest. But if you rip them up, it doesn't really matter because they're so cheap you can just go and buy another one. Where you will want to spend your money on clothing is by buying quality footwear. You have to take care of your feet for them to take care of you while you're hiking. And the best way to do that is by buying quality hiking shoes. The most important aspect of any hiking shoe is how it fits your foot. So try before you buy or at least have a solid understanding of how your foot's shaped and what's worked for you in the past. Budget footwear can be good if it fits your foot but it tends to just fall apart after a short amount of time and little use. Invest in quality footwear and you don't have to worry about your shoes failing you. If you've bought quality big three items, then it's likely you don't have a lot more budget to spend on accessories. But there's no need to worry because everything else can be bought cheaply until you can afford to upgrade. Items such as your cook system can be super simple and cost effective or stupidly expensive. All you need is a canister stove and a lightweight pot. Even name brands make quality but budget friendly options. I'm still using the same cook system that I bought two years ago for $50. Although I'm now looking to upgrade, I say I got my money's worth many times over. There really are tons of affordable but high quality accessory items when it comes to hiking and backpacking. In terms of electronics, you can find plenty of power banks under $100. And there are plenty of free navigation apps that you can download on your phone, so you don't need to go out and buy a crazy expensive GPS device. I use Avenza Maps on my iPhone for the majority of my navigation. Avenza Maps is completely free to download and use, and their maps work without phone service if you start tracking before you go out of range. If you're hiking solo and in remote areas without phone service, then I'd suggest picking up a personal locator beacon, which can be expensive depending on what you need. You can just buy a simple PLB, or a bio satellite communicator which allows you to send and receive text without phone service and the latter is much more expensive. Sleeping pads are another item that can be quite affordable or crazy expensive depending on the range of temperatures that you're going to be hiking in. If you're sticking to summer and fringe season hiking then there are plenty of budget sleeping pads that'll work just fine but when it comes to winter you need lots of insulation and that's where the prices start to rise. Foam sleeping pads are the cheapest but they're the least comfortable. A non-insulative inflatable sleeping pad is probably your best bet as a beginner. They're reasonably priced, perform well and are comfortable when the temperatures aren't close to zero. So if you're just starting out, that's what I'd recommend. 
Other smaller items like your toiletries and first aid kit can all be assembled at home. So pack whatever you like, there's no need to buy anything fancy. If you're wanting to cut back on the amount and variety of equipment that you need when starting out, I'd suggest sticking to well graded trails and if you can, avoid hiking in bad weather. As you gain more experience, you'll figure out exactly what it is that you need to take. I can tell you what I take item for item, but I pack things to suit my situation and unless you're doing the exact same hike as me on the exact same day, then you're not going to need to take what I take. If you're looking for a shopping list of all the gear that I'd recommend for beginner hikers, I've got a full list on my website as well as links to all the equipment I've suggested in this video in the description. I don't want you to go out and blindly buy things that I suggest or other people suggest. The point of this video was to give you a framework to understand what exactly you need to buy for your situation. Everyone else can tell you what you need, but at the end of the day, you're the one who knows exactly what you want. But if you like the look of anything that I've suggested or shown in this video and want to try it out for yourself, then all the links are in the description. Some of the links are affiliate links, which means that I get a small commission on any purchases made using those links. This is at no cost to you, and it would be a nice way to say thanks if you found this video useful in any way. Don't let decision paralysis stop you from getting out on the trail and enjoying yourself. Go and try new equipment and learn along the way before you make any big purchases. Don't be afraid to make mistakes when buying equipment. Learning about what you want and what works for you is all part of the experience. Thanks for sticking to the end, and I hope you found this video useful so you can stop worrying about what gear to buy and start hiking. So until next time, go and hit those trails and enjoy yourself. Happy hiking.